I'd like to call the uh, Joint Special School Building Committee to order. It's Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. We're doing an online meeting uh, originating out of the National City Hall Auditorium at 7 p.m. Um, I would like to read the statement regarding our off online meetings. As chair of the Joint Special School Building Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporarily to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the government's emergency order. However, in accordance with emergency order, I am confirming that we are using WebEx for this electronic meeting. All members of the Joint Special School Building Committee have the ability to communicate contemporarily during this meeting using this platform, and the public has access to the contemporary listen via phone number 978-990-5298. The password is 273-974. We previously gave notice to the public regarding information to this meeting and the instructions have also been placed on the city website providing a mechanism for public to alert the public body during this meeting if there are any problems we do not have a phone number set up but if you can if you have a problem using that number and hearing us you can text any of the alderman last name first initial at NationalNewHampshire.gov. Adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access, if the, in the event the public is unable to access the meeting via that phone number I just gave you, uh, and we are notified, uh, we will have to adjourn the meeting. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking the roll call attendance. Each member of the states their presence, they're present, and plus also state where they, whether anyone is in the room with them during this meeting, which is under, required under the right to know law. So, would Mr. Garino please call the roll? Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Alderman Dowd. Present. I am off site, doing distance. Uh, uh, COVID-19 prevention, and I am alone. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alderwoman Harriet Gathright. Um, he was here a minute ago. Uh, Linda, uh, Alder, Alderwoman Gathright, can you hear me? You seem to have lost contact. Oh, oh. Yep. oh there she is. Ms. Gathright? Okay, I'll come back to her. Alderwoman Clee? Here, and I'm in City Hall. Alderwoman Lou is not, not present. What happened? Oh, there you are. Alderwoman Gathlight, Gathright? We'll have technical difficulties. Alderwoman Wilshire? I am present. And you're by yourself? I am at she, City Hall. She, she's in the auditorium. <laughs> okay. Um, Ms. Bishop? I'm here. Are you there? I Hello? Am. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Ms. Bishop is here. Ms. Gathright, is that you? Now? Now. Ms. Bishop, okay. will you tell us why you're attending offline and that, that you can hear us and you're alone? and why you're offline. I can hear you. I'm at my house practicing social distancing. Um, there will probably be children running in and out, so alone <laughs> is an understatement, but as the only adult here, yes. Okay. Ms. Gathray, can you hear us? Okay. Um, Ms. Brown? I am present. I am 
practicing social distancing also. I am at my house and there is no one else in the room right now. Thank you. Ms. Giglio? I am here at home and I have been at home for 20 days now. I am practicing very social distancing. Uh, Mr. Garino is here practicing social distancing. I am alone by myself. Uh, Ms. Raymond? Uh, yep, I'm here. I am uh, at my home practicing social distancing. Um, I am alone in the room, um, but like Ms. Bishop, I have children who may wander in at some time. Also with us tonight, we have Ms. Timmons. Here, and I'm alone. Uh, we have um, Mr. Smith. I'm here alone in my office. Uh, Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan, uh, you're on mute. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Can you hear me? Ms. Fitzpatrick? You're on mute. I'm sorry, I'm here and I'm alone. In my home. <laughs> uh, Lynn, Linda Gathright sent a message. She is here. Can you hear us, Ms. Gathright? Can't seem to call in. She's having technical difficulties, but she is. Yeah, before we go any further, we have a quorum. Yep, we have a quorum. Um, also with us is, is Mr. Dubois. Present. Coming from the world headquarters of Harvey Construction, and I am alone. <laughs> uh, Mr. Lee. Present, uh, uh, joining remotely from Maine. Okay. And Mr. Ouellette. Also present, and I'm joining also from Maine uh, remotely. All right. Very good. Uh, roll call. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting of January 23rd, 2020? I move that we approve the minutes from the previous meeting, January 23rd, 23rd. 2019. 20, okay. 20, 2020. I will, I will second. 2020. You know, we don't need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Um, would you... Take the roll to approve the minutes. Okay, on the motion, on the motion to approve the minutes, um, Alderman Dowd. Yes. Uh, Alderwoman Harriet Gathright. She Again. had to. She actually left, and she's going to come back in. Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Clee. Alderwoman Clee. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire. I am here. I mean, yes. <laughs> Ms. Bishop. Yes. Um, Ms. Brown. Yes. Ms. Giulio. Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond. Is that a yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Motion. Motion carries one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to zero. Motion carries. Yeah, and normally we'd accept those minutes by uh, uh, just the, uh, without further objection, but uh, I wanted to see how the voting was going to go. <laughs> just to make sure we get the voting process down. All right, tonight, uh, this is uh, our first of, of online meetings of the Joint Special School Building Committee. I'm glad you're all here. Um, I just wanted to mention that the middle school project has been, uh, has, hasn't slowed down. Things are progressing quite well, as we'll hear in a minute. Uh, Sean Smith and I had to approve some minor contracts to keep this thing going. Uh, and if you have any questions after I mention what they are, you can ask them, but one was to MMI for additional borings for fairgrounds in the road so that uh, we know what we're getting into and we, we improve that road around the school. That was $5,100. I approve that. Um, 
at the temporary classroom for Fairgrounds Middle School. We had to uh, let a contract to do the found. I believe the foundation is right, Sean. That's correct. And that was fifteen hundred dollars that Sean approved. And then RFP Associates, the hazmat plans, which are critical to the project, that was ten thousand dollars, and that's been approved. If there are no objections, I'd like to uh, ensure that uh, everybody's okay with those. If anybody has any concerns, let me know right now. Seeing none. Remarks by school administration. John? Oh, I will uh, save those when we get into the rest of the business. Okay. Mr. Donovan? Not at this time. Okay. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Uh, just to say that I've been in touch with the architects and we do have meetings set up for the new building and uh, the architects to talk to staff next week. Excellent. Okay. I I know for discussion. Uh, the first one that we'll have is the architect's report from Heroin. Who's going to take that? Uh, I will. Uh, I'll give a summary of uh, where we're at. Uh, so um, I'll kind of go through each school. I think that'll be a, a good way to do it, so that everybody's kind of clear. Um, the overall, um, just a, a higher level summary is that uh, the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic uh, did did kind of shuffle things around a little bit for a moment. Um, but we are we at the uh, Harriman are. are all on board, we're working remotely um, and we're making great progress now that we kind of settled up at home and, and are able to you know, be, be going full head. We're communicating uh, left and right via conference call like this or on the phone constantly. Um, so so just, just as an overall summary, uh, uh, progress because of the COVID uh, was slowly stunted, but it has, has kept going uh, since then and, and is in full swing. At Fairgrounds Middle School, uh, we issued schematic design uh, at the end of last, uh, actually, sorry, now it's the uh, two months ago in February. Uh, pricing came back from Harvey uh, recently and appears to be good news from Harvey. I'll let them re report their, their uh, good news. Um, we're making progress toward issuing uh, an early structural package so Harvey can bid uh, with the hopes that the steel and rebar can be ordered in time for the for potential construction uh, in the summer. Uh, today, I just spoke with uh, the Nashua Building Safety Department uh, to discuss options for uh, some review, initial review, uh, what they're doing, what how they're how they're operating, uh, despite you know in, in light of the COVID uh, epidemic. Uh, seems like they'll be willing to review some early PDFs. We'll, we're going to send them our schematic design. Um, and then I'm also going to send them a, a, a narrative of a, some scope so they can start looking at it. And then he, uh, Mr. Collins is his name. He's going to return uh, a call to me and, and maybe uh, exchange some emails uh, to uh, so we can kind of work through some of his questions. <clears throat> so that all is going very well and moving ahead at Fairgrounds. Uh, over at Penichuk, uh, we're still making excellent pro pro excuse me, progress there on the schematic design set. Um, the, the initial intent for that project was to uh, issue schematic design for that last week. Um, and again, a little bit with the COVID uh, epidemic uh, starting up, it kind of stunted a little bit of our work. So we're, we actually shifted it um, a couple weeks. So we're actually looking at April 9th to issue that project for schematic design. We don't envision that being an impact to the overall project. It's just kind of an intermediate date that is uh, in there that we, we just had to sh shuffle a little bit. So the DD level or the, or the, the co uh, construction document level might squeeze up by a couple of weeks to help make, make up some of that time. At the uh, new middle school, uh, also due to some of the COVID uh, relations and then some scheduling conflicts we had, we, we our programming meetings were, were held up a little bit. But as Donna indicated a, a few moments ago, uh, we, we've rescheduled those meetings for next week and, and, and expect that uh, we'll get right back on track with that project. That's all I have for a uh, summary at this time. Uh, Jamie, just uh, for the edification of those that, that might not know, can you go over the three levels of drawings, the, the uh, schematic, the, 
design, detailed design and the uh, build? Yep. Uh, so schematic design is the, so we start off with concept, which was, was in our uh, reports back uh, last year. Uh, we've moved into schematic design now, which is starting to build the project uh, to a little bit refined from the concept design where, where we have um, the programming discussions start getting in depth. We start showing more information on drawings. Um, it's a, a, a lighter level um, detailing than, than later they'll come later. Um, and it allows the owner to review that level of design with, with just the layouts of the buildings and, and some of the major um, major uh, infrastructure components like big mechanical units and, and, and electrical work and site work um, at a very broad level. Uh, once that kind of gets uh, signed off by the owner, we move into uh, design development phase. Uh, that refines it to the next level. It really starts to narrow in the systems we're going to use. Uh, it starts to look at details of how components go together. Um, and then once that gets, again, signed off by the owner, we move into construction documents. Um, at that point, uh, it kind of locks in the plan, and we really start running forward with the design details and uh, and uh, so that the, any, anything we're showing at that point, the contractor can build the, the buildings. Once we finish con uh, construction documents, uh, we hand it over to Harvey and then they're gonna do their bidding phase where they're gonna get subs. And they'll come back with the, with the cost and then they move into construction phase from that point. Just so you know, the further along we go in these drawings, the less likely is we're gonna change anything especially when we get into construction drawings, it's too expensive. So we're not gonna be doing changes at that point. So as we go through, they will be getting the various levels of approval, uh, both from this committee and, and, and also uh, the city city's planning department. So um, the drawings will also be reviewed to some degree by the full board of education uh, and the school district so that you know, we're all on the same page. Okay. Um, Mark, did you want to add anything? No, I, I, I think that covered it pretty well. I, again, I think uh, to your point, uh, Rick, we're, we're going to do everything we possibly can given the circumstances to share the design as we move forward so that uh, we're communicating uh, with everyone and following up. I know that was part of uh, the discussion we had when we began uh, after the referendum, just making sure that we get out to everyone to see everything. So we're going to do everything we can to communicate and uh, give people the opportunity to weigh in. Also, uh, I've been working very closely with um, Sarah Marshan, and she is going to be helping us expedite the approval process for fairgrounds due to the time frame and everything that's going on. So uh, that will go uh, very well. Jessica, did you have a, a question? Yeah, I was just curious about how frequently we're going to be able to get together and um, be updated to for that approval process as we get closer to especially the new build. Are we going to get to weigh in before the drawings get too far along? Absolutely. Because um, once once they're that far along, we're not going to be changing anything. So it's very, very expensive. So everybody will get a chance to, to look at things before we get to that point. Rick, if I may. Yep. Sure, Jamie. Uh, yeah, I just want to follow up on, on uh, Ms. Brown's uh, question. Um, yeah, we, we're working on how we're going to uh, share plans. Um, we can obviously send drawings to, to anybody that want, want, would want to see them, but uh, digitally uh, would be a great way to send those along. Um, we, we also would like to meet with another round of, of the teachers uh, and share the um, discussions we had initially to get to this point at schematic design. We had a discussion, we had meetings with them before. They made some suggestions and, and uh, on layouts and things they'd like and not like and, and we incorporated as much as of that as we could into the drawings. So we'd like to come back and, and have another round with them. Uh, and it, maybe it's digitally at this point or re remotely. Um, we can we can do uh, like go to meetings and actually show our screen and point on things and let people chime in and also take control and ask questions. So uh, that might be one way we we uh, we approach that. Um, but it's definitely intent. And the same can go with with the board. We can try to do something like that as as needed. Um, 
but that's the intent is to see, kill, still keep everybody involved and uh, able to uh, ask questions and, and see what's going on. Okay. Trish, you said you wanted to see the plans. The, the plans for fairgrounds are the least deep, uh, thick, if you will. And Sean and I have a copy of those, and they're, I don't know, what is it, two inches thick? And they're, they're very, you get the smaller ones, and they're even then, they're large. They're, you know, quite, quite, quite big. If there is, uh, they can be sent, like we're sending them to the planning department electronically, but, um, I think uh, uh, if you want to see them, they can get them electronically, but hard copies uh, would be difficult. I, 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 if you don't mind, I, I would not want to see get hard copies of it, but to be able to at least have them, and then I'd be very interested in getting the um, kind of like the meeting notes of what it was that the um, teachers that they met with um, found objectionable and whether or not we can make those changes. I, I'd like to know as the process goes on, what changes are being tweaked as, as he was saying, you know, something just may not work for the school. So they're going to make changes. I would be very curious to know what those are as we're going along. So, so that when the public is asking us questions about, well, did you get this input? Did you get that input? We as members of this board can turn around and say, yes, this is how it was designed. This didn't work for this reason, and these were changes that were made. So I'd like to kind of be brought into that process. We don't have to go to every meetings that they have with everybody, but if we could get some notes and some ideas of what's going on, I'd appreciate that. So we will have notes from all those meetings, and ja Jamie and, and Donna will, will make sure that they get out, uh, and everybody on the board will get a copy of the minutes, and, and anything that changes going forward would have to be approved by, by us. Jamie? Yes, thank you. Yeah, we can, we can definitely share our programming meeting notes uh, and the plans, uh, as Rick suggested, digitally is very, very easy to get out uh, to everyone. I think what we'll do is we can, if, if it works, we can send to Sean and then and Sean needs to distribute or wants to distribute to, to uh, whomever. I think that may be the best way. And, and Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Oh, that sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah, tip. Typically, we'd have more face-to-face -face showing you the plans in a meeting, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, maybe by the time we get building the new school, that'll change. Um, hopefully. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, we will be sending stuff out electronically. And uh, again, when we get to the construction drawings where they actually give them to Harvey to hire people, uh, there won't be many, if any, changes when you get to that point. Legrino? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like the Board of Education to um, have, have buy-in to, uh, to the uh, approval. Uh, before that, what you just said, you know, before the, uh, the plans go to uh, well to bid. But um, I think that at some point we should have the board give its official uh, okay, to to uh, uh, to to the uh, process so at some point in the process. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that would be important. Yeah, we'll. Um, Any, we certainly are going to get the input of the full board, and Heather can make sure that, that happens. Uh, the actual vote on anything that changes is in this committee. Um, Rich, did you have something else? No, other than to say, I think um, Alderman uh, Gathright is still having some issues coming in and out. She's been sending me some texts, so, um, and we saw something that said she left. But uh, just adding to that other thing, um, the other comment that I'd made, like I said, you know, I don't want to um, to make more work for anybody, but where we're not getting the, the physical views and getting the handouts, I think sending us as much information as possible um, or digitally is is truly important. It, it makes it easier for us to to um, make our decisions as well as to talk to the public. So as we go along, Jamie, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we'll probably have stacks of drawings, but there'll be drawings that can be shared that will give you a better picture of what's actually happening. Uh, there's a lot more detail in some of these drawings that get into that. You, if you try to print them, you're going to just fill your house with paper. You already get enough with all the homework you get. So um, we, we will find a way to make sure that everybody uh, 
as access. So was there anybody else that? Can I just add one more thing? Um, at the at the next meeting, um, if we're going to have some kind of plans or something where we've always gotten presentations, I know through when we did the um, Board of Aldermen meeting, we could see a presentation up on the screen. If that's at all possible, that would be great too. It is possible to do that. And uh, there's nothing that we need to share that way tonight. And we had to get this meeting uh, together so we could approve some contracts and pay both Harriman and Harvey so that uh, they can continue their work. If there's nothing else, Carl. Yeah, thanks, uh, Rick. Kind of parlaying off of what uh, Jamie said earlier, uh, we completed our schematic design estimate based on the documents that we received. And I'm pleased to report that we came in slightly under our original concept budget that we put together. So that's good news. So we'll steam ahead to the uh, design development level on, on those drawings. Um, we are gearing up and I've been shuffling some people around here because I'm about to bring in some more forces uh, to get through the through April into early May, because the way I see it, we're going to have schematic design estimate to do on Penichuk. We've got to put a package out for the steel and the foundations for fairgrounds. Um, not too long after that, we're probably going to be expecting the DD documents on fairgrounds and following right behind that would be the schematic documents for the middle school. So we're finally uh, gearing up to, to, uh, to get this thing going for you. Uh, what we've been up to lately, um, obviously, we, like I said, we finished the schematic design estimate, which was positive. I did have a meeting out on site with the power company to talk about uh, the new transformer and location and how we were going to go about doing that. Also talked about how we were going to wire and power the portables that will be needed, which we'll be discussing here shortly uh, for temporary space. Uh, so that's all squared away in terms of the utility company. They have sent uh, the gentleman is, is, is I established a work order. Let me stop right there. Established a work order with them from there. Once that meeting was established, which we had, it then goes into uh, engineering. And I expect to hear back from engineering here in a couple of weeks on, on uh, what the back charge is always electronic back, electrical back charges. I'll find out what those are. Right now we're carrying an allowance in the estimate, which I think we've got it covered. Uh, so we're all set there. Hopefully it'll come in slightly under what we had. Uh, beyond that, uh, we also assisted uh, Mr. Smith in terms of uh, trying to come up with numbers for portable classrooms, which he'll be presenting to you a little later on here. So beyond that, uh, we're starting to gear up, starting to look at a phasing plan for Penichuk, so we can uh, come to terms on how we're gonna get through that project. And likely we've been tweaking the phasing plan for fairgrounds. Uh, not a lot of changes, just in terms of how we're going to enter and exit the building, trying to segregate ourselves from the students and the staff. In a nutshell, that's what we've been up to. Okay, just uh, so people know that because of, of not being able to use the gymnasiums in the middle schools, uh, we need portables at fairgrounds to be able to shuffle the students around so that we that they can do their work if the students are there. Uh, but even in, to, and that will be next school year, so uh, we still need the portables. Correct. Okay, any questions for Harvey? Seeing none. Okay, invoice approval, Mr. Smith. Yes, um, so again, there's uh, a number of financial reports in your package. Uh, I'll just refer to the uh, first one, which summarizes everything for you. Um, but the invoices for tonight are to Harvey Construction for $5,000. That actually goes back to the phase one work. And that's their final invoice for that. In addition, uh, Harriman has two invoices for uh, about one invoice for Fairgrounds Middle School, $22,348.45. One for Penichuk Middle School for $16,319.46. Um, one to the, for the new middle school, 9214 and eight cents. So, so those are invoices that we would have approved at the last meeting, but did not because we uh, canceled it. And then for the uh, more recent month, again, three invoices, uh, $59,891.52 for the new middle school, 
$48,914.18 for fairgrounds and $32,563.60 for their work at Penichuk Middle School. Uh, finally, there's an invoice for Hainer Swanson. If you recall, they are our surveying firm. They did, uh, the architect needed additional survey work done for Fairgrounds and Middle School, and that uh, they completed that work and gave us the results, and their invoice for that was $16,059.45, and we recommend we approve all those invoices. So I'll make a motion to approve the following payments on the invoices. Harvey Construction, $5,000. Chairman A and E, $189,251.29. And Hainer Swanson, $16,059.45. Are there any questions? Seeing none, please call the roll, Mr. Garino. Okay. On the motion to approve, approve the invoices, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? I think she's still, she's on mute. Ms. Gathright? Uh, I'll come back to her. Alderwoman Klee? Yes. Okay. Ms. Gathright, are you, can you hear me now? Oh, she's still having problems. Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Gathright, can you hear me? Or maybe you can send us a uh, <laughs> written written notice. Uh, saying notice. yes, you can't oh. hear her. We, we still can't hear her. He's saying yes. And she's saying yes. OK, he said yes. OK. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine yeses. Motion carries nine to zero. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is the RFP commissioning services. Mr. Smith. Yeah, so first of all, your, your question might be, what is commissioning? It's something we've done on every project. So I've been working for the city of Nashua, dating back to the Amherst Street Elementary in the late 90s both high schools and then the, the five uh, elementary schools we completed uh, this past decade. And it, it, keep it kind of short, uh, they provide a, another set of eyes and ears for uh, the architect, for the uh, construction manager, and for us. And uh, they are typically, well, they are engineers in their own right. Uh, some companies do this as a sideline to the actual design work. Um, some are specialized in, in commissioning. We're not only commissioning the mechanical systems, but also the building envelope, which uh, is basically the roof and the, and the walls. Um, so that's, that's kind of what the process is about. I did write up a one pager, it's in your package. So we sent the RFP out and we uh, the results are again in your package. We received uh, bids from seven companies. Um, the financial results are in your package on the one spreadsheet. Uh, broke it down into uh, three phases, design, construction, and then post-construction acceptance. Um, and, the, the different firms um, provided numbers in different ways. Of, and uh, so I, I kind of kept everything in those three areas. The design number was fixed, um, but the construction and acceptance were um, their estimate. In some cases, they uh, some firms put that was a not to exceed number, but they did not all do that. Uh, on a second uh, spreadsheet, um, I, I had evaluation criteria, and uh, basically that was going through each proposal and checking the boxes. Yes, they provided, or no, they did not. Um, so on that spreadsheet, you can see some of my notes and uh, 
some of the blank areas which I entitled no. Um, so uh, then in a uh, earlier meeting between Alderman Dowd, myself, and the architects uh, and Harvey, we went through the proposals somewhat briefly, but um, determined that uh, due to costs, um, that the firm that we used in the last five schools, the last two schools was, was way too high. That was SMRT. We've used uh, CX Associates in the past. Um, they did okay in those jobs. Uh, but our, we, we kind of focused on two firms that were kind of in the middle, our RFS Engineering and Turner. Um, just a little bit on the other firms, uh, the, the JFPS, CS rather, is a, basically a one-person firm, uh, one engineer and one secretary. Uh, we didn't we determined that it was way too small for our job. Uh, NV5 is a recent company put together by venture capitalists. He absorbed an engineering firm that uh, was somewhat local to us um, because of the, the, the uh, change in, in uh, management and, and the fact that a number of the this other firm's employees left the firm once that merger happened. Uh, we decided that that probably wasn't the good way to go. Um, so again, RFS and, and Turner, and both are good firms. Uh, RFS did the engineering for the high school project. Uh, Turner did the engineering for Fairgrounds Middle School when it was last renovated in the 90s. And then they did the Amherst Street Elementary. And then they did uh, the architectural and engineering work for Charlotte Ledge and Fairgrounds Elementary Schools uh, earlier this decade. So both good firms. Um, we felt that Turner was a little bit stronger in the building envelope, uh, and uh, that was pretty much a unanimous uh, recommendation from our subcommittee. Yeah, if I can interject, uh, also going back 20 years that I've been involved with a joint special, um, we try to pick firms that are either local to Nashua or in New Hampshire if they meet the criteria that we need. Obviously, we wouldn't take one if they didn't. Uh, but uh, two are very close, and we lean towards Turner because we have experience with them. They're in New Hampshire, and uh, uh, I, I we highly recommend that we go with with Turner. So, does anybody have any questions, concerns? No. All right. I'd like to entertain a motion to award the uh, commissioning contract to. Turner. Um, so moved. For, and the amount of not to exceed $272,000. Mr. Greeno made, uh, made the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Greeno, would you call the roll? Uh, on the motion to approve the contract with Turner, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yeah. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Ms. You're on mute. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. Okay, um, Sean, would you prepare the documentation to let Turner know? Will do. Hey, Mr. Smith, next is uh, FMS, the William Scottman Lease Agreement. Yes, so uh, as uh, Paul Dubois mentioned earlier, uh, we need, and Alderman Dowd as well, we need swing space at Fairgrounds Middle School uh, because the project will be starting this summer, but then continuing. Uh, into the school year, and we are working in uh, classroom wings and need to put those classrooms somewhere. Uh, we don't have the gym available to us because of the middle schools of physical education is a uh, state requirement. So uh, I'd actually 
Harvard Construction did the bulk of the, of the work in, in, in doing this. Um, they're getting the quotes. The location of the portable classrooms, if you're facing the front of the school, will be the back left. Uh, for those of you that have been uh, uh, watching through the years, there was a portable classroom back there at one point. Um, gosh, I don't at least 10 years ago, probably a little bit more before we took it out. Um, so we, we have a need for two portable classroom buildings. Each building has two classrooms, so it's a total of four. Uh, we need, uh, again, the two, and we have the total charges for each. Uh, those are in your package. For the first building, it's uh, $89,274.72. For the second one, $88,333.56. Uh, both of these buildings will have handicap ramps going up to the front and an emergency egress out the back. Uh, we alluded earlier to the, the foundation plan, which is uh, all these things will be attached and, and, and mounted. Um, I think that uh, everything's gonna be collected electrically. They will have plumbing in them, so the, the restroom and bubblers will be active, and uh, as well as uh, pretty much anything in a regular school will have out there, intercom and uh, whatever. So that's our recommendation is to award those, those uh, contracts to William Scotsman, Inc. in those two amounts that I mentioned. Just to reiterate that uh, when we put portables in like that, we just can't stick them in. We have to meet some stringent uh, city and state requirements relative to how secure they are, water connections, electricity. Um, you know, it's uh, not like just driving up a motorhome and parking it. Um, as you know, the ones that, at uh, Penachuk have been there like 20 years and uh, seem to have uh, been installed okay. So uh, um, hopefully at Penachuk, when we need to move people around, we'll be, we can use those, but uh, that's for another day. So we need these for fairgrounds. They're in the budget. So I would need a motion to award these two contracts to William Scotsman, Inc. So moved. Alderman Wilshire, who made the motion? Mrs. Raymond, do you have a question? I, I, think do, and I think Ms. Brown had her hand up as well. Oh, okay. Uh, so Mrs. I'll defer to her first and then I'll. All right, Mrs. Mrs. Brown. Um, I was wondering if uh, Mrs. Fitzpatrick or anyone from the district had been contacted. It seems that the intent of these buildings was to replace um, physical education. And so I wanted to make sure that there, we could make sure we could use that within our state curriculum. This is Fitzpatrick. Um, my understanding is the modulars are going to be for academic classrooms, so uh, we'll still have access to the gym. That's why the construction company and uh, the school won't have the ability to use that space. Yeah, in the in when we were doing the elementary schools, what we were doing the five schools we've done recently is that we take the gymnasium and we split it up into classrooms and use that for to move the people out of the classrooms we're working on. We can't do that at the middle school levels. We have to keep the actual gym open. But so when we're moving people out of classrooms and fairgrounds, we're gonna have to move them into the portables while we do that work. All right. Thank Any other questions? This is Raymond. And... Uh, I did, thank you. I just, um, can you refresh my recollection? How long um, do we expect to be using these portables? Jamie? <laughs> you want to answer that? How long are we going to? Yeah, I, I think uh, it would it would be for just next year. Um, and I'm not even sure it's the full year. I think Carl can help me out here. I think it's a 13, 11, 13 month uh, uh, construction period starting. So it'll be going to be close to the next year. But I, yes, thank you, Carl. <laughs> the lease period is 12 months. 12 months. OK, so we'll have them out there for 12 months. Okay, thank you. Welcome. And then they disappear. <laughs> okay, so the motion is to approve. Rick, Rick I have oh. a question. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, you said that this is a 12-month lease, but then you said something about when we would start with Penichuk, that it could possibly be used there. Um, no, 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 that, no, 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 no. Okay. We're going to use the two that are at Penichuk. We have to move those to build the new addition on the Penichuk. Okay. We have to move those two portables they have there now. We're going to move them some another spot, which we can get into much later. Okay, I, so I, I guess my, my next question is, um, like I've always had a, an issue with the the ones at Penichuk, um, security wise. Um, I did, I noticed that you said that they've got handicap entrance and an emergency egress, um, but security wise, in the face of what we're going through year after year and so on, keeping our students safe. Carl, do you want to handle that? Thank you. Want to handle that? Yeah, thank you. Um, what we will be doing out at uh, let me start with fairgrounds. When they are installed, my goal would be to fence those off so there's no access from anybody outside. Um, and then, as I said earlier, we're starting to look at the phasing plan on Penichuk. My goal would be if we could build the additions and create the swing space that we need, I would love not to I would, and leave the portables where they are and space out the addition for the proposed library a little later. Trying to see if we can work it out where we won't need any portables at Penichuk. We're not there yet, but we're, we're taking a hard look at it. That's my goal. If I could get rid of the portables, once the new space is created, the new wings are created, that gives us some swing space, and we should be able to get rid of the portables, move people into from the portables into the additions, and then we could do that work out front with the uh, for the library. I'll have more to report on that as we go along, but that's 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 the way I'm looking at it right now. Any additional questions? Mr. Green, hey, did you get what? Uh, Rick, Sean here. Um, just to add on to what Carl said with the fence, we'll also make sure we have security cameras back there so that the front office can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Green, these... did, did you get the actual numbers for the motion? Um, I didn't. Get the numbers was 88. Uh, it's in the uh, packet. It's in the 80,000s. I didn't get the exact number for each, uh, but I can get it uh, from the uh, packet. Uh, I have it right in front of me, actually. Uh, let's see. I get the invoice right. Yeah, actually, I do too. <laughs> what did I do with it? Um, I have $88,333.56 for one of them. Is that yeah. correct? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay, the other one. And the other one is $89,274.72. Okay, so the motion on the floor is to approve the lease agreement with Williams Scotsman Inc. Uh, in the amounts of $89,274.72, $88,333.56. Um, I know we had a question from Mrs. Brown that uh, on the uh, phasing of these projects, those have changed a little bit since the last time because of all that's going on. But we do have an updated phase schedule, and as this, we will be providing you with with a copy of that uh, via presentations as we go. Okay, so the motion. I, I, the do motion. Have a, I do have a quick question about where where on the site they're going to be located on fairgrounds. Will they be will they they be people able to see them from the street? Carl. I don't hear you, Carl. Can't hear Carl, me. we can't hear you. Well, I'll, this is Sean here. I'll, I'll answer for him. <laughs> uh, no, you won't be able to see them from the street. They're in the back left-hand corner on the exit on that road that goes around the school. You won't see them. Excellent. Okay. Um, no more questions. I'm sorry. All right. <clears throat> Are you ready for the vote, Mr. Yeah. Chair? Yeah. I believe so. I believe so. Okay. okay. On the motion on the to motion. approve the 
uh, lease contracts for the portable classrooms for fairgrounds. We're getting echoes. Somebody's got their speaker and mic on. Might be me. I don't know. No, nope. all set. Okay. Uh, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. All right, thank you. Again, Sean, would you take care of an, awarding the contracts? We'll do. Okay, enrollment projection overview. Who uh, had that? Uh, Sean? Or? I believe Mr. Donovan or Ms. Fitzpatrick uh, provided those. Okay, um, I think the, it was uh, Dan. I, Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, this I I that's yeah. Those those were the projections we received from the Nashua Regional Planning uh, Group. Um, there's three different methods that they use. So you, you when you look at it, you'll see three three of the. Um, different methods and they all they're somewhat alike some are a little they're all showing slight decreases in the uh, number of students which over the last few years we've seen whenever we've done one of these enrollment studies um, historically the enrollment study tends to exaggerate slightly the um, decrease in enrollment um, but Keep in mind that these are put together using a formula. Mr. Garino may actually have worked on these in the past. Um, and they so they count things like births and net migration, and so they're making estimates. Um, they certainly don't know how many children are gonna be born next year. They don't know how many people are gonna move in versus how many people are gonna move out. Um, but based on historical trends, that's what they put together. So. That's the official uh, enrollment study done by professional people. Um, so I guess that's all I have to say to introduce it. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that, Mrs. Raymond? Thank you. Yes, I'm just wondering if um, all of the new construction and the new apartments that have been authorized in Nashua was taken into consideration in any of these. I know um, the construction that's already happened in the Dr. Crisp area, um, they're rapidly filling their school. Um, and so now I'm looking at the Henry Hanger building and a couple other sites. Um, has any of that been uh, incorporated into this data or projection? Mr. Donovan? Uh, if, yes, if, if there was a building permit taken out, then they would have included it. If the permit had not been taken out, which I don't think some of them have, then it wouldn't be included. Right, so you won't have the hangar building in the, in the building that's gonna go with Corvo, Ruthia used to be. And there are a couple of other developments going in. Yeah. There's one on West Hollis Street. We found that over the years, these projections were pretty close to what we currently had. They would vary by a few students one way or the other. Sometimes they were over the projections, sometimes they were just a little under, but not enough to modify a school. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody else? No? Okay. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else you wanted on Mr. Donovan from that? That's all I have to say on that. Okay. She. Budget overview, Mr. Smith. Well, I believe we kind of already covered that, so it's it's in your package. Um, a separate sheet for Penichuk, Fairgrounds, and um, the new middle school. 
a separate sheet for uh, the phase one, which was conceptual work, and then a total sheet. Um, and it all totals up to the total amount that we've had a previously approved by the alderman. Okay. Um, by the way, I did get a question from a member of the public about, are we still going to do the middle school project, you know, because of the, the taxes going up so much? Just to reiterate on the bonding, the payment for the bonds over the course of every year is kept pretty level. Mr. Fredette, make sure of that. So no matter how many projects we have, the payment amount that comes out of the budget is pretty much level. So, it, and, and the two high schools are coming off. So it stays level, he keeps it that way. Anyway, so now we have comments by committee members. Does anybody like to comment? Just wanted to make one comment. I had, I had, if if I could be heard. Sorry. Sure. Thank you. Um, I know it really does sound silly, and I I put it as tongue in cheek, but the um, this COVID virus is going to cause for a lot of births. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe these numbers will be going up. It's supposed to be taking six feet apart, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, based on being a realtor and, and talking to realtors almost every day, there's a lot of construction going on. Is you know, again, the, 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 the numbers are pretty much going to stay the same. We don't have a lot of building space in Ashwa, and whatever's there is being used now. Construct. I know the realtors and, and the developers are buying land as fast as they can and building on them. So... Anyone else who has a comment? No. Oh, all right. We don't need a non-public. Is there a motion? Alderman motion Wilshire. to adjourn. <laughs> Alderman Wilshire made a motion to adjourn. Would you call the roll, Mr. Garino? Okay. On the motion uh, to adjourn, uh, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. All the woman Wilshire? Yes. Is Bishop? Yes. Is Brown? Yes. Is Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. We are adjourned at 757. All right. The next meeting is uh, Thursday, April 23rd. Uh, and uh, We'll be getting in touch with the details. And if, if we're gonna have a presentation, we can do it on this format. What happens is when the presentation gets put up, it just, you don't see all the faces anymore, but they all go to the top, but all right. So good night, everyone. Stay safe. Good night. Social distancing. See you. Thank you.